welcome to Keys Smash Studio's tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an automatic door. We're going to create a door that slides open and then delays for a couple seconds and then slides back closed. We're going to prompt it to open whenever the player overlaps with its trigger box. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So to go ahead and begin, we'll create our C++ class. And we're just gonna call this automatic door. And the first thing we'll do is create our class variables. So we're gonna have two public variables. These will be changeable from inside the editor. So our first one is going to be a vector three. And this is going to be our end position. This is the position we want the door to slide towards. Our next one is going to be our speed. So this is going to be a float. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a default of one. But this is a public variable, so that way you can easily adjust it in the editor and not have to go back to the script each time to find the speed that you're looking for. And then we'll go ahead and do our private variables. So we're going to have two booleans. The first one is going to be for whenever we're moving. And we're going to default this to false, as we're only going to have it start moving once the player overlaps with its trigger box. And then our next boolean is going to be for opening, because we need a way to determine when the door is opening versus when it's closing. And we're going to default this to true, because I'm going to have the door starting closed, and whenever the player overlaps, it's going to begin to open. And then now we need a start position. So we're going to do a vector 3 again for this, and we're just going to call this start pose. This is so that way whenever we're closing the door back, we can go towards that original start position. And then our last variable is going to be private as well. It's going to be a float. And this one is going to be a delay. The reason for the delay is so that way we can hold the door open for a couple seconds before it goes back closed. And those are all of our variables. So now we're going to go ahead and get that start position. So inside our start function, we're going to do start pose equals our transforms position. And that's all we need to do inside of start. We are going to add some stuff inside of update, but we'll go ahead and do our function first. So we'll add that below update, and we're just going to call this move door. So we're going to do void move door. And the argument for this is going to be a vector three, and we're going to call this goal pose. And the reason we are giving it an argument is so that way we can use the same function for opening and closing the door, but we can pass in that in position whenever we're wanting the door to open, and then pass in the start position when we're wanting the door to close. So inside here, the first thing we want to do is get the difference between our goal position and our current position. So float distance equals vector 3 dot distance. This is a built-in function in Unity that gets the distance between two vectors. So our first vector is going to be that transform.position, which is our current position, and our goal position, which will either be our end position whenever we're opening the door or our start position whenever we're closing the door. And then we want to check what that distance is. And if it's greater than 0.1, then we want to continue moving the door. So to move the door, we're going to take our transform position and we're going to set it to a vector 3, and we're going to use their lerp function so that way we can have a smooth transition between our current position and our goal position. And so our current position, which is that vector a, is going to be our transform.position. Our goal position, which will be that vector b, is our goal pose. And then we want a rate at which we're transitioning. And this float t argument is just the percentage that we're wanting to go between these two. So if you were to put a constant number here of 0.1, then it would go 10% between your start position and your goal position. What we're going to do here, though, is give it a speed, and we're going to make it our time dot delta time. So whatever our time dot delta time multiplied by our speed is, is the percentage that it will go between our current position and our goal position. And this will end up being called every update whenever our door is moving. And so it will progressively get closer to that in position as our current position updates. And it will continue doing this until that distance is less than our point one that we're checking for. And so once it is less than that point one that we're looking for, 
Then we want to check our current state of the door. Is it opening or is it closing? So if opening, then what we want to do is have our delay. And we're going to plus equal this to time dot delta time. And for those that don't know, time dot delta time is just the time that has passed since the previous update. And so our delay will continue going up and eventually you want our delay to end. So we're going to do if our delay is greater than 1.5. You can make this number whatever you want. This delay is going to be how long the door stays open before it closes again. So for me, I'm holding it open for 1.5 seconds. And after it's been opened for 1.5 seconds, I no longer want it to be opening. So we're going to do false here. And that will transition into our closing state. And then what we want to do is say if we're not opening, in other words, we've already opened and now we're closing again. And we'll go ahead and say that we're no longer moving, so our moving can go back to false. And then we also want to go ahead and set our opening back to true, so that way when the player overlaps with this again and moving is set back to true, we know that we're going to be opening the door. So that's going to be our move door function. So we can go ahead and go back up to our update and go ahead and fill that in now that we have this move door. So the first thing we want to see is if we're moving. And if we are moving, then we want to check our state. Are we opening? And if we are, then we want to call our move door function. But our goal position for this will be our impose. And then if we aren't opening, in other words, we're closing, then our move door function will take in our start pose. So again, the update happens every frame. So each frame will be checking if our door is moving. If it is moving, we'll be seeing if the state is opening or closing and then calling the move door function with the corresponding goal position of either opening or closing. And now what we want to do is actually make our moving variable a property so that way we can access it outside of the class. And the way we do that is by doing a public boolean as that's the type of our moving property. And then we'll just call it moving with a capital M. And then inside this, we're going to have a git. And we'll just return our moving if we use our git. And then we'll have a set. And the set will just say our moving equals the value that is passed. And that's all the code for our automatic door script. So again, each frame, we check to see if we're supposed to be moving, and then the current state of our door to determine which way we should be moving. And then inside our move function, we are lerping between that current position and the goal position. And then once we've gotten close enough to that goal state, we go ahead and determine whether we're opening or closing. And if we're opening, we hold the door open for a couple seconds. And if we're closing, we go ahead and set our variables back to their defaults. So now what we're gonna do is go over to a character controller. I just have a very, very basic character controller so that way I can move into the door frame to show you that it activates when a player overlaps with it. But you can use any character controller here. What you're going to wanna to do is add a private void on trigger stay function. And then inside this, you want to check if the thing that's overlapped has a tag that matches your door. I'm gonna end up tagging my door as just door, but if you end up doing a different tag name for your door, you wanna make sure that that name is what is inside that string. And now that we've determined that we're overlapping with a door, we wanna say if the other object has a component, of a door automatic, sorry, an automatic door, then we want to get its moving property. And if that is equal to false, in other words, the door isn't already opening or closing, then we want to again get the other object, get its component of automatic door. And then this time we're going to set its moving property to true. And that's all you need to do inside your character controller to determine when you've overlapped with a door and to set that door in motion. So now we can go ahead and go back to our scene. And now that the script has compiled, we can create a door. So I'm going to make a cube and I'm going to set its position to 0, 1, 0 and its scale to 
to 2.2. So that's going to be my door. I'm going to go to my materials and just make it brown. And then we're going to add another box collider. This box collider will make it to where you can't walk through the door. This box collider is going to be the trigger that determines when we've interacted close enough to the door that we want it to begin opening. And I'm just going to make it 10. So anytime the player comes within this portion or that portion, the door will begin to open. And then finally, we need to add our automatic door script to this door. I'm going to leave the speed at 1. And then I'm going to have its in position go this way. So I'm going to do about three in the x direction. So I want this to be three. I still want the y to be one as it currently is, and then the z to be zero as it currently is. And now we need to go ahead and tag this door. So I'm going to go up to this tag, add tag, click the plus button and I'm going to name it door as that's what I called it inside my character controller. And then I'll go ahead and give this door the tag of door. And now we can go ahead and test and play. So as you can see, if I walk into that trigger area, it opens my door, the door stays for a second and a half and then closes again. Because it's on trigger stay instead of on trigger enter, once the door closes, the player's still inside that trigger box, so it opens again. Now if I step outside of this trigger box, you can see that the door stays closed. And if I go around to the other side and walk in from that side, the door opens again. So as a recap, we created an automatic sliding door that begins moving when the player overlaps with its trigger box, stays opened for a determined delay time, and then closes once more. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream games on Twitch Tuesday and Fridays. We have a game on the Google Play Store called Blast Off, and we have a Unity asset pack of kids' toys. We also have a Patreon that has a YouTuber supporter tier, so be sure to check that out. If any of those things interest you or you'd like to support us in any of those ways, all those things will be linked in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.